really want to talk about in today's episode is what actually happens when you have that relationship with a narcissist that ends. What do they go off and do? Because it is not like any other breakup, let's be honest. And this was something I really didn't expect when I got divorced 10 years ago. I kind of thought once that happened, there'd be this process of sorting the divorce out, sorting your finances out, sorting child contact, and it would be quite methodical. It would be quite strategic. Hmm. However, what actually happened was I had complex post-traumatic stress disorder. I'd got depression, anxiety, and I was self-harming. And I was really, really at rock bottom because I'd got a huge amount of debt, over $100,000, And in fact, in 2013, I even had my family home repossessed as well. So you can imagine single mom, two beautiful children, desperately wanting to do the best that I could, but feeling like I was literally wading in treacle all of the time. And I'd take one step forward one day, and then all of a sudden the next day I felt like I was taking 10 steps back. So what is it the narcissist actually does then when the relationship breaks down? You know, what is it that makes actually the abuse continue? it doesn't just end and in fact what can happen is it can get even worse and really to explain this I'm just going to take you back a little bit and I know I've talked about this in other episodes but really how a narcissist is formed so we know from a scientific research perspective that a narcissist isn't born that way there isn't a narcissist gene um, per se But what happens is a narcissist is formed in childhood and there can be a host of reasons. They can be golden child. So, you know, them being treated like they are the best on this earth. And whilst we might think that is nice, actually, that puts a lot of pressure on a child. It can come from abuse, neglect, a whole host of different parameters. And I've done other episodes about that. So I don't want to kind of take too much time today talking about that. So we know narcissists aren't born. They are created in childhood. And what happens is during that childhood, they create these wounds um, that I like to talk about around worthlessness. So a lot of people think narcissists are really, really confident because of the way that they behave. And actually, it's the complete opposite. They feel probably one of the most worthless individuals in the world. But to not feel the pain of that enter their protector parts and outwardly projecting that pain and hurt. Now I do a lot of internal family systems, which is an evidence-based parts therapy in the work that I do. And I absolutely love using IFS because it really helps in a really compassionate way as well, not just from a space of those victimized by a narcissist, but actually also looking at reasons why. Now, don't get me wrong. This does not excuse a narcissist behavior let's be honest there's no excuse is there for abuse but we can really start to explain and when we start to explain then that really helps lift the shame and guilt off those victimized by a narcissist because hopefully you can start to see it's actually not your fault um, at all the narcissist would behave like that to anybody who was also coming from a place of being a codependent so we know codependents are very much give 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 and a narcissist is take 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 And there are reasons why both the codependent gives and the narcissist takes. And it's a match made in heaven. It really, really is. So we know the narcissist is created in childhood. They have a wound of feeling worthless. Up pop their protector parts. And those are very narcissistic protector parts. And they can be addictions. You know, many of the people in my community talk about their um, ex-partners of having sex addiction, porn addiction, um, drug addiction, alcohol addiction whatever that is. And actually addiction is, again, a protector part because it's a great distractor away from what the brain thinks is even more painful to sit in and feel, which in this scenario is a child feeling worthless. You know, that's kind of like the biggest pain you can possibly feel. So all of these other protector parts pop up And the same for us who've been in a relationship with a narcissist. We're the same. You know, for me, it was people pleasing, high achieving perfectionism key protector parts because if I was all of those no one would notice I wasn't good enough but the narcissist has these narcissistic protector parts and they are absolutely projected onto the other person and that can come out with coercion manipulation aggression addictions anger 
all of these different elements, you know, we're not born like that. These are our protector parts that we blend with when we know that there's a core wound that our brain never wants us to feel because it's going to feel too painful. So if the reason why I've explained all of that in brief, I go into details in other episodes about that, but I just wanted to recap because then when we're talking about, you know, what does a narcissist do when the relationship ends? This can really help you understand that their behavior is actually nothing to do with you. It may seem like it, don't get me wrong. I certainly thought it was, but it actually isn't. If you imagine when you break up with a narcissist, now that can be you've ended it and just about managed to crawl away or they have ended it, which was the scenario for me. You know, my ex-husband ended our relationship, even though there'd been years of abuse Yeah, I was so at rock bottom. For me, it felt safer to stay than to actually leave. This is why we can never judge anybody who stays in an abusive relationship. Again, there's a lot of complex issues and parameters around trauma and our nervous system, why we believe it is safer to stay. And again, another episode, I've done other episodes about that when people judge others who don't leave relationships knowing that they are abusive. We mustn't do that in society. It's very judgmental and it doesn't Um, look at situations through a trauma-informed lens. Do you imagine relationships broken down, whether you've ended it, they've ended it. What does that actually mean then? Well, it's almost like we are ripping the scab off the wound of the narcissist. All of a sudden, it's either you've ended it and that's like that wound is bleeding because you are then shining a great big spotlight on the fact, see, you are worthless because I'm not going to stay with you. And that is like the worst pain a narcissist is going to feel. Their behavior escalates and that's when they can get angry. They can be abusive. They can be manipulative. They say, oh, you know, I will, you will not get a penny out of me. I'll take you through the courts. And this is why ongoing abuse, perpetual abuse can continue through the courts because the narcissist is almost so angry and their wound is bleeding so much. It's almost like you will not get away with this. I will make sure that you pay for the fact that you are ripping the scab off my wound. Now, when it's in reverse in this scenario, let's say they've ended it. The only reason a narcissist will ever end a relationship with you is because they have got supply somewhere else. Now, I know when my relationship broke down and my husband said to me, you know, we'd been through a really tough time. I'd had multiple miscarriages. There'd been affairs and all of this. And, you know, things hadn't been good for a very, very long time. And when my husband left and he said, well, I am leaving this time. And I said, yes. Um, He told me again, looking me in the eye, there is nobody else. There's nobody else. I just can't keep making you feel like this. Okay. So again, classic narcissistic traits, acting like I'm leaving you because this is the best thing for you. Okay. And of course, at the time, because of the position I was in, you know, my cognition was kind of going, well, maybe, but my gut, which as we know, if you've done any nervous system um, education with me, we should be listening to because there's more neurons in our gut than in our brain. I knew there was no way he would be leaving unless there was somebody else. But it actually took me maybe two months to actually gather evidence and, and know that. <laughs> and just tell you a little story. I was with a friend one day and all of a sudden I get a text through on my phone clearly the text wasn't for me. I won't embellish what was said in the text, but let's just say it wasn't for me. And when I read it, in some respects, it was very validating for me because I kind of thought, yes, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And it validated actually that my gut is always right. And I didn't say anything back in a text to start off with. And then I got another text about an hour later going, I know you know. (laughs) Okay. And again, that started a whole host of conversations between us, actually culminating in one time when I'd got the last of um, my ex husband's belongings um, for him to collect from the house. And when he came in, you know, I was just kind of in this state of incredulity, really. And I just said, you know, I have no idea how many affairs you may have had. And I just literally, I remember it like anything. He stood there with his arms folded, leaning against the wall. And he was like a different person. I almost thought, my God, I married this man and uh, he's the father of my children. And he just looked at me and said, hmm, none of your business, is it? 
and just that cold nature it was just like a switch it completely changed and you know when we talk about how does the narcissist behave when you end that relationship it was almost like I was looking at a completely different person it was almost like I thought what had what had gone wrong obviously I was still in that place of blaming myself and feeling guilty and complex PTSD so I was really looking at is it me have I done something wrong am I not good enough because of what he was saying to me and in that moment then you know we'd probably had a couple of months where he'd not really seen the children too much but in that moment it was almost like a switch had gone it was almost like right you know now you kind of know who I am and what I am so now I need to make sure everybody knows it's not me now I need to smear your reputation now I need to you know make sure that I'm the victim in all of this and that there were reasons why I did what I did and this is why it is so difficult when you break up with a narcissist because they won't admit to what they have done because remember, there's no subjective distress with a narcissist. They will be projecting that blame onto you, your fault. I only had to behave like this because of you. And that can leave you feeling, remember, if you're suffering with complex PTSD and you're in that, that trauma bond, you're in that trauma brain and, and all of that activation in your body, that's really going to leave you literally at rock bottom and I know I certainly was you know when we talk about trauma responses I really went into freeze I didn't really want to go out the house and it was only because I'd got my two children that I had to take them to school because nobody else was going to do that I actually went out the house and I I knew if I didn't have children in that moment I would have quite happily become an agoraphobic you know it felt safe being at home it felt safe being in my bed and that was literally all my system really wanted to do but I had to make myself take the kids to school and this is you know you've probably heard me talk about functional freeze in that scenario as well so you know it was a really difficult time because it wasn't just that the relationship had ended and obviously this was the father of my children it was the ongoing messaging, texting, accusations, blame. And it was so heartbreaking in some respects, you know, and all of that guilt thing. And my God, this is the father of my children. I'm going to have to have some kind of semblance of relationship with him. But everything I tried to do, even though I knew what had happened, to try and create some semblance of communication just didn't work. And again, this is when I talk about you have to then set up, you know, extreme modified contact and parallel parenting. So really what the narcissist does when they break up from you, they will either have other supply to go to. And if they are telling you they don't, the likelihood is, you know, 99.9% .9 they will. Absolutely. You know, because they need, remember, to feel their sense of worth. So they're never going to leave and have nobody. OK, because they will always need their drug of choice, which is narcissistic supply. So if they leave, there will be somebody else. And if you're the one to tell them to go, it's like you're ripping the scab off the wound as well. And if they go and they're with somebody else, they have to recreate the narrative then. <laughs> you know, one of the phrases I used to say is, he's rewriting history. You know, it's not true, but it had to suit him because the alternative, remember, for a narcissist is what? Ownership, responsibility, looking in the mirror and, and realizing what they've done. They will never do that because that is really going to trigger that core childhood wound that they have. They will always then create a new narrative, a new story. I did this because they did that. And their new supply obviously will get that new story. You know, one of the sad things that I always see as well is, you know, many, men, many women and men, if your narcissist is in another relationship, particularly if you've been married as well, and you know, maybe they've um, had an affair, that that sense of blame and anger is placed on the person that the narcissist is having an affair with. And, you know, I always just invite people to think back, how was the narcissist with you at the start? They will tell you exactly what you need to hear to get the result that they want. You know, and I certainly know with uh, my ex-husband and his, his wife now, he ended up marrying um, this particular affair, that it it's not her fault because at the end of the day, I know he will have said exactly what needed to be said in that moment to get the desired result. So I 
but I had no malice in any of that because, you know, I know people say, yeah, but as women, we shouldn't be doing stuff like this. You forget the power of a narcissist, okay? They can say and be a very, very convincing. And I don't want you to feel angry at the person the narcissist is with, because I already know you're going to be feeling that trauma response to the narcissist. So to also have that on the person that they are with, I really want you to try and really think that this person is a grown adult. The narcissist is an adult. They made their choices, okay? They will say whatever they need to say to get that de desired result. And we all know what that's going to be, right? So if you can dial down any little bit of activation, then that's worth it because we're not going to be pumping out more cortisol in that scenario. Okay. So and that is, I just wanted to say that to you because I think it's so important because I see people calling, you know, the affair woman or the bitch or the bastard and things like this. And it really isn't necessary because at the end of the day, you know, the narcissist okay, will say exactly what they need to say to get that narcissistic supply, because everything is driven, remember, for a narcissist to not feel that core wound of being worthless. So there has to be an element of, I had to do this because they were like that. So the new person goes, I can see why you had to do that. Yeah, I understand all of that. Okay. That's not your fault. And actually, it's not their fault either. It's the narcissist being very manipulative because they don't want to feel the pain of their younger child wound in all of that as well. So it's really important for you to know. So the narcissist then will take on creating history again, rewriting that, a new narrative. And the other thing a narcissist will do, which is really, really difficult to deal with, is they will likely try and smear your reputation. And we call this flying monkeys they're really going to try and get all of these people to believe their narrative so again they feel better about themselves and it soothes their wound because other people friends family maybe maybe their family who you thought you had a great relationship with all of a sudden turn against you and that can be really really difficult but remember what the narcissist is like they are masters of saying what they need to say to get that desired result and you know this because you ended up in a relationship with them as well. So don't forget that hasn't changed. It's just new people. So they will create this new narrative to family, to friends, because remember, what is the alternative? What the alternative is, they say, oh, I cheated or I treated my partner like this. I did this. I financially abused them. I manipulated them. I coerced them you know, they're never going to say that to a family member or a friend, because that means looking in the mirror, which means them actually acknowledging and taking responsibility, which means ripping the scab off their core childhood wound. That isn't going to happen. Their brain is set. Don't want to feel that. Mustn't feel that. The deepest pain. So they will have the protector parts coming up, almost like the flying monkeys, okay, as a protector part, really, because then the narrative that the narcissist is saying, all of these other people will be soothing their wound. See, I must be okay. I must be important. It must be their fault because that's what the flying monkeys are saying. And I know how incredibly difficult that was. I always used to want to follow my ex around when my children were younger. And on the odd occasion when he picked them up from school and, you know, you know what people are like, they gossip and it would get back. Oh, so-and-so was chatting to your ex-husband and stuff like this. And and I used to feel incredibly frustrated and almost wanting to go into the school playground with a megaphone and go, right, can I just tell you the truth now, please? Because I really, again, coming from being that codependent, I didn't want anyone to think badly of me. So it's almost like I wanted to make sure everybody knew the truth and everyone knew it wasn't my fault. And I'd been doing my best because, of course, my wounds were really, really triggered with all of that of not feeling worthy and good enough because as a codependent, it's that lack of self-love, right? So I used to want to go and make sure everybody knew, but there are always going to be people that will take the side of the narcissist, believe the narcissist, and you know, you trying to make sure that people know the truth and everything else, it will exhaust you, okay? This is where I call it a friend's cleanse. You need to reevaluate who you are surrounding yourself with. You'll, you'll really get to know who your true friends are um, when you, when you uh, divorce or you break up from a narcissist, you really, really will. 
So, but I, it doesn't take away how hard I know that that is because I do know it's really difficult because when you break up from the narcissist, it, it doesn't end. They have to have the narrative that it's your fault. They have to have that narrative that um, people can understand why they've left or why they've behaved like this or again, from a covert narcissist perspective, that victim mentality, poor me. So they get all that sympathy from others as well, because that's still feeding um, themselves too. So we know when you break up from a narcissist, I want you to think about, and I always say this with my clients, that when you break up from a narcissist, know that for the first 12 months, it's going to be a roller coaster, okay? Because you're going to be sorting the actual breakup divorce out, children if you have them together and also your finances and they are legal things that anybody who breaks up or divorces somebody where you've got commitments with each other will have to go through when you break up from a narcissist with those as well you know dial that volume up by a thousand so there's not only you dealing with the trauma of the narcissist you're also trying to deal with the practicalities and the daily strategies of actually sorting everything out and it's incredibly difficult to deal with a narcissist because remember, their sole goal is so that they still feel worthy, powerful, not their fault, because the alternative is we're ripping the scab off their core childhood wound. And the reason why I wanted to share this with you is so many of us, me included, when you break up from a narcissist, we sit in a place of anger and also freeze, the retreating, the dissociation. You know, the, the kind of dissociation comes from, is it me? Is it my fault? Am I that worthless? Is that why they've left? And then the anger of how dare they treat me like this? And we kind of bounce between those, okay? We're not feeling safe. We're in trauma responses and our protector parts are showing up for us, desperately trying to look after us and, and not make us feel pain. Even though we are in pain, our brain thinks it's less pain than something else. But again, remember, this is your opportunity to start to get curious about why you feel the way that you do. What led you to be in a relationship with a narcissist? Now, that's not to say it was your fault that you were treated the way that you were, because it isn't. You know, you are the most wonderful person. But what it allows you to do is really stop, really get curious and think, what was it about me that thought it was acceptable to stay in a relationship like that for however long you were in the relationship? But say that to yourself with compassion. You know, I sat in judgment of myself for a long time. Caroline, how could you be so stupid to stay for so long? Okay, that's not looking at myself with compassion. Because actually every second of every day, I was doing the best that I could with the past programming I had, trying to stay safe and in the least amount of pain, just as you are. You're doing the best you can. I know you might not be liking how you're feeling right now, but your brain thinks it's still less painful than something else. So we've got to get curious about that. Well, what is this something else that your brain thinks you can't feel because it would be too painful? Because the likelihood is that's one of your younger parts that are wounded as well. So I hope that kind of helps validate your experiences, helps you understand that, yes, the narcissist is going to behave in a different way. It's not just an end of a relationship. They are going to create a new narrative, a new history. And I just want you to know that I believe you. And even if you feel like you're, you know, swimming against the current almost with trying to tell other people and they don't understand, don't judge them on that because they're just hearing, remember what the narcissist says. And, and we know how manipulative and controlling and, you know, great storytellers that they can be as well. Find the people who do believe you, okay? Because at the end of the day, you will always find people that will take the side of the narcissist. Always, always, always. I am sure with my ex-husband in his circle of friends, I'm the wicked ex-wife. And I have no doubt about that. Now, 10 years ago, I'd have almost wanted to go and find his friends to make sure they knew. But now I'm okay. I know I can look in the mirror. I know I'm worthy. I know I'm good enough. I know I did the best that I can. Um, in our marriage. And that in itself calms my system. Okay. It's not about, I don't need that external, external validation from others in going, oh yeah, I see why that happened. And it wasn't your fault, Caroline. I don't need that from other people to make me feel better. And this is where your inner work comes from. You know, as a codependent, um, 
obviously the magnet to the narcissist, those codependents, which you will be when you come out, well, in the relationship and when you come out before the healing, that external validation is all about how you feel your sense of worth and enoughness, okay? So we have to change that. You, as you look in the mirror, need to know you're enough, need to know that you are worthy, regardless of anybody else, what they say, what they do. It's not on a scale. As much as as you are a man or a woman, you are enough. You are worthy. You are lovable. You were born like that. It wasn't on a spectrum and you were a two out of 10. And that's why the narcissist treated you like that or your parents did. You've always been that. This is always about how other people behave based on their past experiences with their protector parts coming up, projecting that pain and hurt onto you, but not because of you. It's not your fault. So I want to make sure that you know, I hear you and I see you and it isn't your fault, but this can be your opportunity now to go within, to look at those reasons, to understand what protector parts for you are showing up and what wound are your protector parts trying to protect you from feeling. Because when we work on that, those protector parts don't need to show up. You know, my, my ex-husband, still the same. I don't get activated or anything. You know, in fact, I feel huge compassion um, towards my ex-husband because I can really understand why he is the way that he is. And, you know, I can see compassionately how that is. It doesn't excuse his behavior. Absolutely not. But it helps explain and helps me understand And it lifts any feeling of guilt or shame or that it was my fault or I did something wrong because I wasn't good enough or I wasn't worthy. That is not true, just like it isn't true for yourself. So make sure you come and join my community. Make sure that you um, join my Facebook group, follow me on Instagram. I'd really love to keep connecting with you because it's really important for you to make sure that you are in communities where people understand, people believe you. There's no judgment at all. You know, that's one thing that I always say. I am always coming from a place of compassion and no judgment, regardless of whether you're still in the relationship and you're feeling like I'm so weak. Why aren't I leaving? There is no judgment from me because I know, because I do the trauma work around this and with my clients and and with my um, narcissistic trauma recovery program. So I know, I know where you are right now is because your system thinks it is the safest. And we just need to get curious about that. So take care. Look forward to um, speaking to you in the next episode.